we import gigawatts of modules every year so just to give you a perspective uh, we clocked in the 8 gigawatt number this year uh, just in india in terms of sales and uh, while we did that we all also uh, touched the 100 gigawatt mark globally With us is Mr. Dhruv Sahani from Jinko Solar. Thank you, Mr. Dhruv, for joining us. Thank you. Uh, thank you for reaching out, and you know, uh, I hope that everybody is having a good um, uh, REI, and uh, and I think it's a good bounce back from from the COVID times, and uh, I think the response has been really great. So thank you so much for coming down to our booth. Thank you. Pleasure. Okay, so uh, Jinko Solar boasts of a great uh, growth story. Uh, so tell us about its founding and you know where it stands today in terms of sales and its major milestones recently sure uh, so um, jinko solar i'm i mean we need no introduction we've been in the market for a very very long time uh, we're the world's most innovative and one of the largest solar panel manufacturers uh, we've done great business globally uh, if i talk about the setup so we're headquartered in shanghai and uh, we have almost nine production facilities spread across china malaysia vietnam and the us in india uh, we do not have a local manufacturing setup as of now uh, but we import gigawatts of modules every year so just to give you a perspective uh, we clocked in the 8 gigawatt number this year uh, just in india in terms of sales and uh, while we did that we all also uh, touched the 100 gigawatt mark globally and uh, jinko is the first company to you know uh, achieve such an amazing feat both globally and in india so we have, we take a lot of pride in that fact and um, but we also owe a lot of this you know to to our clientele and customers in india um, i think we have very very good customer base um, we try and be supportive to our customers as much as possible but i think the same gets replicated from their side as well and um, we have an amazing business relationship with almost all the major ipps project developers conglomerates epcs in india so tell us about your product line and the recently launched products as well uh sure so um i'll i'll take some time talking about how production is set up so um this year we've touched the 60 gigawatt um capacity in terms of overall manufacturing and um if i specifically talk about the n type topcon which is now our flagship product um so we plan to touch 16 gigawatts of manufacturing within this year uh we are aggressively promoting the product the technology has been welcomed by everybody it's a step up from the p type um, technology which is right now there in the market right. um i think one good thing uh, is that we are an early mover in this um, space and we are really the advocates of n type uh, so we have orchestrated a complete shift from p type to n type and um, it's been welcomed very well by all of our um, you know industry counterparts and customers uh, so we we feel that for the next few quarters for the coming couple of quarters n type is going to rule the market uh, our offering tiger neo comes in both uh, monofacial and bifacial variants uh, we also have the 72 cell and the 78 cell variant within tiger neo um, we have good performance numbers coming in from other parts of the globe where we've already installed the tiger neo uh, we are in advanced discussions with almost all the major customers in india uh for the next set of requirements opening up in q1 and so on and so forth and we are very hopeful that you know this will uh help us you know take the technology standard one step above from what it is right now and so that's about modules i would also like to tell you that we have launched a, a new product line around the ess solutions so which is the talk of the town today and and we are providing a plug in place sort of uh, customized battery and energy storage solutions for the utility sector cni and residential as well so uh, speaking of technological innovations and modules tell us about bifacial modules do you think the market is really for bifacial module is gaining momentum today oh yes i think um, bifacial as a technology has been accepted uh, very well by now uh, if you look at the recent um, tenders in seki and ntpc the record low tariffs which were achieved so i think most of those um, numbers are possible with the technological innovations and the kind of yields uh, which uh, the engineering teams were able to get by using a combination of trackers and bifacial modules right. and um, if i talk about jinko i mean uh, we have been selling bifacial modules for quite some time now and uh, uh, some of the players we've sold uh, bifacial modules for their projects in multiples of megawatts and uh, 
and um, um, I mean it's already there in the market to one of our customers we've sold almost one gigawatt of bifacial modules um, so I think this in itself is you know um, is is a welcome statement is a is a um, is a confirmation that bifacial as a technology is very well accepted now and we will definitely continue to you know keep working in the bifacial space and just keep optimizing this technology so for example with Tiger Neo uh, the bifaciality factor that we are able to achieve is 85 percent, so which is amazing. So we are sure that this will, you know, go on as a as a as a variant, and along with monofacial, bifacial will also rule the market. Okay. Uh, do you also think that uh, polycrystalline is now on its way out? Yeah, I mean there are there's no doubts about it. Uh, poly, for at least for the mature markets like ours, it's an obsolete product. I still feel that there are some requirements or some inquiries on poly in a very small scale DG segments or very small scale CNI projects um, uh, but uh, I think the shift to mono has been complete and and everybody now wants mono yeah. uh, so I think that poly even though it is still around and some people are still making poly some still buying poly but from a technology standpoint I think it has stopped making sense and is according to us more or less an obsolete technology uh, what about HJT or uh, let's say wave thin wafers that are also coming up in a big way? W what is your take on that? Uh, so uh, I think um, so we have a lot of resources at our disposal and we have a huge R&D setup back in China as well. Um, so we have run our numbers, we've run the, we've done our calculations, and we have done assessments on all kinds of technology. Mm -hmm. And uh, while HJT uh, is something which is still you know I think. Um, in this nascent stages and you know might be become big in the in the coming future but I still feel that n-type along with the topcon um, is something which is gonna at least rule the market for the next couple of quarters so in terms of you know degradation better degra uh, lesser degradation higher efficiencies uh, we feel that topcon is something which answers the market requirements as of now uh, but yes I think SGT is something which uh, will also get assessed as the time as in when the time comes and I think some people are already working on it also. Yeah. Uh, so please tell us about your uh, breakup for utility, residential and say, uh, CNI. Also uh, um, as, as the case for most of us you know the, the large solar panel manufacturers I think the maximum business in terms of revenue or volume comes from the utility players uh, because obviously uh, their installations happening in multiples of gigawatts every year. Um, we are going strong in the CNI segment as well and uh, today all the um, CNI players who are you know directly catering to the end customers via PPAs um, are our customers and we've supplied modules to everybody. Um, we are growing now in the DG segment as well and we are expanding our DG team and uh, we are adding more channel partners and distributors um, in the mix and we're also you know doing a lot of DG sales directly to some of the key customers so I think going forward what you'll see is that uh, Jinko will go stronger in the local markets through, through our DG efforts and of course utility is something which we've already you know doing very well and we would just want to maintain that leadership position right. and uh, how's the residential been performing have the numbers picked up over the last few years given that there's more awareness in the customer today uh, I personally wouldn't be able to comment on on that because um, uh, I haven't had any direct experiences of residential sales um, in terms of solar modules but uh, maybe the DG segment from our team can you know uh, elaborate on that and uh, tell us about your expansion plans for the next um, two three years so uh, like I said uh, we add uh, capacities every year so uh, we have already touched 60 gigawatts of manufacturing this year and uh, the company really you know plans to add a few uh, some capacity every year uh, we have been assessing the India plan as well and uh, I think we're just waiting for the right time and um, if it comes to it I think the management will never shy away from you know putting up some investment or setting up shop in India. Um, there are a couple of factors which govern this and, and there are a lot of options on the table which we are assessing. So I think if not in the near future but in the distant future there will be something. Uh, but yes uh, we are assessing different routes and different options of how we can be more competitive in the current landscape and uh, you know. Uh, very soon I think uh, we'll figure something out and, and we'll get there. Thank you so much for joining us.